Coming up on Bear Podcast. The Flash. Resurrection. Bucky's now anti-gay, anti-immigrant. Will Nintendo bow down to pop culture? And lick this app. A training app for lesbians. All this and more, coming up next. Bear Podcast, 509. Hey, all you bears. He's texting to bump into Big Harry Man. So scientists may have finally solved the puzzle of what makes a person gay. Well, I'm not taking you to get some of the scrub there fix it for you. Can yeah. I do the podcast in my underwear? Gay, okay, the geek and the bizarre. It's one of those things that is funny, cute, and cute. Yeah, two glasses of wine. <laughs> <laughs> He's a lightweight, so it don't take much. You're listening to BearPodcast.com. Okay, fine. You really have to. Welcome, everyone, to Bear Podcast. I am Nard. And I'm Ray. And welcome to episode 509. And it's March 11th, 2014, and it's Tuesday. And uh, I just uh, came from a vacation. <laughs> He's been on vacation all month. Yeah. What are talking about? That's right. So, so where did you go this time, Maynard? I went to Denver. I went to Denver with Mike. We visited our friends, uh, John and Palima. So shout out, John and Palima. Thank you for hosting us. It was a great weekend. Or great week. Yeah, because um, we got to try a lot of things in Denver. It's the first time I've been to Denver. It's one of the states that I'm missing. So I, I have about four states to go. Uh-huh. So I haven't been to South I haven't been to South Carolina. Uh-huh. Kentucky. Oh, really? You're going to June on June? Mm-hmm. My brother's getting married. Oh, that'll be a good reason to go to South uh-huh. Carolina, right? <laughs> okay. So I, I haven't been to Utah, uh, Kentucky, West Virginia, and South Carolina, I guess. Mm-hmm. So if I cover, cover, all those, cover all those, then I'm, I'm good to go. So yeah. the big question is, did you smoke out while you were there? I did not smoke weed. No, I did not. It's available there everywhere, almost everywhere. If you see something green... Uh, if it's if if it's a building that says you know a, a green plus or something, then it's got, they have medical marijuana. Yeah. <laughs> so were they selling selling it at the Seven Eleven? That's the question. No, you have to be an accredited one. I uh, don't think Seven Elevens are accredited uh, accredited ones. How many Girl Scout cookie sellers did you see? I didn't see any. Didn't eat any. But I've heard they're good. I don't know if they're Girl Scout cookies out there, but <laughs> well, no. Remember the Girl Scout cookie in California that set up outside the pot store and sold out. Like a hundred and something boxes of in like an hour. Was it? Is, was it really laced? Scout? No, it wasn't laced. She was selling Girl Scout cookies. Oh, okay. Outside the pot store. So everybody in that. That's that. <laughs> is capitalism, folks. That's, that's right. working its best, and that smart girl deserves a bad capitalism using uh, Girl Scout cookies. Yeah, yeah, I I didn't get to do that. I didn't do any pot or anything, so that was good. But I did, did skiing. You, did you do any cock? Cock, no. Oh, wait, I did. Yeah. That's right. Uh-huh. I ate cock and balls from the Voodoo Donut. Yes. Voodoo Donut is a restaurant. It's a donut store there. And there are long lines. There's a long line all the time. It's about 20 minutes away. next door to the pot store? No, it's not. Okay. But it would have been a good idea. Yeah. Maybe there is. I'm not sure. So Maybe yeah. they're around the corner. <laughs> yeah. So I got these cock and balls. And, uh, like most men do. Yeah. And it's 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 chocolate covered donut and everything, you know. It's a um, regular two donuts as balls, and then the shaft and the head part are, you know, two two um, side by side donuts. Eclairs, like eclair type, yeah. And it's covered by in chocolate and everything. But what's Did special they put about coconut on the nuts? Oh no, it didn't. No, yeah, just as is. But what's good about the balls? They're cream filled. Oh. Mm-hmm. So they're cream filled, and it's really delicious. It's really good. Yeah. So try out the cock and balls. At um, Buddha Donut, if you go to Denver. Okay, so after that, we, uh, we I got to see Red Rocks. I, I went to Red Rocks where mm-hmm. you two played before. I, it's just exciting. He's like, Bono! 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 Bono. Yes, that, that's how I remember Red Rocks. Oh. Bono, you uh, two playing, you know, Sunday, Bloody Sunday, and the New Year's Day on that, in, that, um, in that amphitheater. And it was really awesome. Did you see him on the Oscars? Yes, I watched him on the Oscars. I saw him on the Oscars. That's pretty cool. They kind of did an unplug thing, which was pretty good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we did that, and uh, I went skiing. I got to go skiing. Did you pull a sunny bar? No, I did not. No, I almost okay. did. I, I, okay, it's my first time ever. I fell about six times. Went on the bunny slopes, and I, it's the first time. I've never skied before. You didn't wipe anybody out? No, I didn't wipe anybody, no. Okay. Did you, you used to ski before, right? I skied once. I skied once. Snow skiing. Excuse me. Snow skiing once. 
Snow skiing. Snow skiing. I went to the top of the hill. I made it finally down to the bottom of the hill. I took a step off and went and sat my ass down in the lodge because I was like, snow skiing is not for me. So you went the uh, the uh, V thing going down. I couldn't make my, I don't know if my ankles weren't strong enough, but I couldn't make it work good enough. It oh, just, really? I was just not coordinated enough for it. So and I you fall, knew, fell a lot, a lot of times? A lot of times, okay. yes. <laughs> I was soaking wet by the time I got down to the bottom of the hill. Cause I didn't have I didn't have the whole bib suit waterproof suit on. I just had jeans and oh, you must have been so stuff. wet. So yeah. I just went inside and sat down there by the fur. Um, I I got to borrow uh, a, a waterproof uh, set, so that was good. After that, we also got to go to the Denver Museum, Denver Art Museum. Mm -hmm. Dam, <laughs> it's called Dam, yeah. and we checked it out. It's pretty good. Saw some. See, I went to the Dam Museum. Da yeah, I went to the Dam Museum. <laughs> went there. Also driving around, we saw that big bear. I mean, have you seen that big bear beside a cultural building? It's a big blue bear that's hold, doing this at the on the building. I saw that too. I didn't get a picture. He's there standing on the streets still going, stop in the name of love. No. No, we didn't. I didn't. We didn't, uh, we didn't stop there because it was raining. It was raining, but it was, so it, it was okay. So after that, uh, we went to Johnny Lee's brother's restaurant. Uh, Johnny Lee is a friend of ours here yeah. in Houston. He's been on the show. Before. He's been on the show before, when it was an audio show, yeah. and uh, then he got banned. He got <laughs> he got banned. <laughs> he got banned because he went and start playing his damn video game, and all we heard was clickety 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 clickety. He was playing while while we were playing. That's right. But anyway, so he was kind enough to you know hook us up with uh, some food there, and uh, we paid. I mean, we, we paid for about five kinds of uh, of uh, entrees there. But then, since we know the owner. They gave us two more. They gave us scallops and steak, and the steak How was really awesome. How you like your steak? Medium rare. Oh. And, oh, next week, P. Landers is going to be next week, here next oh, week. Please say it's the weekend. No, it's not. It's yeah. the week. Weekday. Tuesday next week. I found which means they won't start until 11, which means they won't get on the stage until 12. Okay. Which Why won't you sleep? Why won't you sleep at night and then wake up at 10, then go there at 11? My body won't allow that. No. I just can't do that. <laughs> yeah, you should Talking see about a grumpy old bear, let me fall asleep and wake back up in a nap type situation. Uh-uh. Uh -huh. It's rare that that happens. Yeah. Okay, so we were in the, we were there. We got to visit with Bruce. One of the pictures here is uh, Bruce. Casa Bonita. Oh, Casa Bonita. I should talk about that. Okay. Casa Bonita. We went to Casa Bonita. And if you guys watch South Park... Um, Casa Bonita is one of the restaurants that the carpenter wanted to go to, but he he's not invited. So somehow the story progressed. He got to inside uh, Casa Bonita, and sure enough, there are cliff dry divers. There's the Black Bart's Cave. There are mariachi singing. They're giant penis stalagmites. And there's these stalag stalagmite uh, penises. They have that too. They have caves for uh, for dining tables. That you know, the yeah. dining tables are inside caves. So it was pretty. Good. Very themed. It's very big. It's like Rainforest Cafe. If you've been to Rainforest Cafe, it's more about five times more than um, over the top than than Rainforest Cafe. So we got to hang hang out with Bruce. Hey Bruce. Hey Bruce. So Bruce used to live here in Houston, and Garden uh, of the Gods. And uh, yeah, we, after that we got to see Garden of the Gods. So here's the gang: Jenna Palima, John, and Palima, and Mike, of course, at the back. Yeah, we went there. We Saw some rocks, red rocks. Red rocks. Red farm. And uh, that's pretty much uh, everything that we've done there. And it was, it was, it was a fun weekend. So uh, shout out to um, uh, John and Palima. Thank you for hosting us. And uh, um, Bruce and Gary, although we didn't get to see Gary because he was working that yeah. weekend. So we only got to hang out with, uh, with, um, with Bruce. So we went to a big, uh, what is it? Over Easy. It's a restaurant easy. called Over Easy. Yeah. When you post that, I thought you were talking about Bruce. He was, he's really easy. easy yeah. He's an over easy bear. He's over easy, so. <laughs> so, okay. So, oh, but one, one last thing yesterday, hung out with uh, Dave and Jason. We went uh, batting cages. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was fun. I didn't. See, you ever seen Maynard bat? It's like, oh, I bat like a girl. No, I, no, actually, I couldn't hit it because it was really fast. We, I picked the one that's really fast, 70 miles an hour. And it's I'm, you, I'm not doing I did not do softball I did baseball, so it's you were really thinking you'd be able to do it because you're used to balls coming at your face. Yeah, close. but not the 70 miles an hour. Okay. <laughs> I'm used to that, but not 70 miles an hour. Yeah, it, it was fun. It was good, and um, hung out with the guys, and it was good. So how about you? What did you do the whole weekend? 
Well, I went and saw that little movie release that came out this weekend called 300, The Rise of an Empire, which mm-hmm. I recommend going and seeing it in theater. It's worth because the graphics and stuff to see it big screen and everything. And storyline was good enough. It had me, you know, grabbing my seat because also suspenseful a couple times and stuff when things are going on. So it's a lot of action. Um, what about the guys? All hot. All hot. All hot. But not my type because they're all muscle, beefy muscle, guys. beefy, and yeah. not beefy, but muscle and There's ripped. There's a couple of nice beefy guys. Who, a lot of them have beards. So. Yeah, most of them have beards. Yeah. So That'll do. No <laughs> chest hair, but they got beards. What? They all shaved? They all shaved. Oh. But, so, but it was a nice movie. I enjoyed it. There's a sex scene that I, in the movie that I so wish was between two guys, which is between a man and a woman. But if it had been between two guys, it would have been so fucking hot. Oh, really? Yes. Oh. <laughs> okay, so... Since you've seen that, and we have, we have seen 300, the yeah. first one, how do you, which one's better for you? I like 300 better just because I, I think you deal with more or the court or the group or Leonidas and the guys that followed him there. And this one, you're dealing with one guy that's from Athens, and then you got some of his friends from other cities that are surrounding him and helping him out. But in this movie, everything that's going on during 300 is coincide with what's going on here. Because stuff that happened in 300 affects what happens here. The movie is like it's, the movie progresses. Well, they found out 300 fell, and they use that to do this and blah 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 wow. and stuff. So, so that everything's kind of happening in the two movies concurrently. So, okay. I, it might be interesting one day if somebody takes them and re-edits them and mixes the two together. Yeah, that'd be It'd good. It'd be a four or five hour long movie, but it would be interesting to see how the stuff really plays. Maybe when both comes out. But when both would come out. Yeah, okay. I'll look forward to watch it. Maybe I'll watch it in Dallas. Maybe so. this weekend. So, okay, this week, uh, last weekend also, you guys had a party. Well, we didn't really have a party, per se. We invited some friends over um, to eat pizza, and we bought some stuff from Trader Joe's, and made it each, everybody made their own little personal pan pizza. But we did it to watch RuPaul's Drag Race. So we had a RuPaul pizza party. Okay. So, yeah, Bianca Del Rio was there, right? Yeah. Well, she wasn't in, at the party, but she was on the TV screen, yes. <laughs> yeah. On, on, yeah, she was on, on there. The so. Well, I did get to see Bianca Del Rio uh, two weekends ago. At, but did uh, he get a picture? No. No, I forgot to do, get a picture. I should have gotten a picture. That would be awesome if I had a picture with Bianca Del Rio. because She, she was really funny. Um, and she always, for years, for many years, she's been hosting the uh, Lord of, Lords of Leather uh, uh, Ball. Ba- um, Bal mask. That's what call it. Seeing her without her makeup, I swear I've met her before. Oh really? And I wouldn't be surprised. Oh, you, you at RuPaul, you see them without makeup, right? Yeah, yeah. And I wouldn't be surprised if she's been to Houston and been to some of the coronations that I've been at. Ah, most and probably I just, is. You know, didn't know who she. You know, didn't. Anyway, these so. guys are high drag, so I don't, I don't know anything about that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I got pictures. Let me show you. <laughs> okay. Oh, what are the topics here? We uh, we. we we're going to have this. What do you think of putting this in? Okay, here's a question that we asked before. Okay. Years ago, an old episode of Bear Podcast, maybe. In the relationship, are you a gardener or a flower? I would say the last year I've been a flower. You've been the flower? Yeah. You've been being taken care of and stuff yes. like that? Robbie's been taking very good care of me the last year. Oh. So. Okay. Well, to me, with me and Mike, um, it's more really, it's a give and take. Sometimes he's the flower, sometimes I'm the flower. But I would say we're kind of equal. We support each other. But when it comes to, you know, sometimes when, when uh, uh, like in bed or something, like he has a headache or when he wants a foot rub, and say, I, I would be the gardener, he would be the flower. Mm-hmm. I would take care of rub my back. Uh, scratch my back. <laughs> I feel like the gardener all the time. That's what I feel, really. Although, if I, if, if I feel that Mike is the flower. Of course, if you ask him, he would say, "I'm the flower." Yeah, yeah, big, <laughs> a big fancy. Yeah, that's right. That was gonna happen. So, you guys, uh, tell us, tell us what you think. This was a topic many years ago from uh, B Talk, and uh, and I kind of, th- and then we also brought it up a couple of years ago, and then we kind of thought of. Uh, bringing that up this week, uh, you know, this episode. So, yeah, tell us what you think about um, about being a flower or a uh, or a gardener in your relationship. You have, if you have a partner, so let us know. Okay, let's go to entertainment. entertainment. Okay, if y'all been seeing, it'll probably flash up here in just a second. Get it flash. 
But anyway, no. The Flash, suit reveal for the CW superhero reboot. The Flash is back and his suit is slicker than ever. On Tuesday, the CW debu debuted, uh, debuted the debuted. full suit of the titular character of The Flash, a superhero reboot now in production. The red suit, to be worn by Glee star Grant Gustin as the super speedy crime fighter, was constructed by costume designer Colleen Atwood. Atwood has won three Oscars under her belt, winning the Academy Award for her work in Chicago in 2002, Memoirs of a Geisha in 2005, and Alice in Wonderland in 2010. I hope the fans who treasure the character are as excited as we are by the, what costume designer Colleen Atwood has achieved with this latest version of The Flash's iconic suit, director David Nutter said in a release. The Flash will also star Jesse L. Martin, John Wesley Shipp, and Tom Cavanaugh. Now, you know who John Wesley Shipp is? No. He was the original Flash on the original TV series. Oh, yeah, that's right. Okay. So, And then he went on to play on Dawson's Creek and he was somebody's dad. And then he's been playing all these bad guy, little bad guys that he pops up in TV shows over the years, or a dad figure. I want to say he was in Teen Wolf, and he was a dad in Teen Wolf, and he beat his son or something like that. <laughs> okay. That's the last time. So. And then Tom Cavanaugh is from an NBC show, and I can't remember what it is. Mm -hmm. But his show got canceled, but everybody liked it. And, okay. And I think we talked about it on the show. So, so anyway, the, the, the pictures are flashing through. Okay. I would say I do not like his costume. Man, doesn't like anything. No. I no. like it. I mean, you know, Smallville worked for me. They never, even had, they never even had him in a Superman outfit. No. Arrow works for me. Um, and he's somewhat got a green arrow outfit, but he's Type. not called a green arrow. arrow. Yeah. We keep hoping for a Wonder Woman show and an Aquaman show, which they had done a pilot, an Aquaman pilot for... Aquaman. C uh, CW, because Aquaman was in... Um, What's he going to do? Talk to fish? I mean, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, no, but um, they, had the done video, a, they had done a pilot for Aquaman as a spinoff from Smallville, and it tanked. That I think... They did that, really? They actually did it, and it just they didn't go anywhere with it. They dropped it. They uh. lost interest. And I, I don't know if Justin Hartley, who was playing the Arrow, I think he was playing the Arrow on Smallville, but they moved him over to play Aquaman in the TV show, and then they did the pilot, and then it just went bomb, bottoms up. Oh, that's so, pretty sad. But anyway, so we'll see. But I'll so be, we'll you see. Know, I, I'm looking forward to it. I like Flash. If, if the storyline's good enough, I really don't care about that costume that much. It would have been nice to see... In Smallville, him in the Superman costume. But I think there was some lawsuit about that because they didn't obtain rights the right way. And that was one of the concessions of letting them keep in the show on was that they could never sh actually show him in the Superman outfit. So, mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm looking forward to it. I, I do like it. I just don't like the costume. Maybe they'll have some improvements. But I'm just saying that... that uh, the Flash... The concept of the Flash for me is really good. I mean, I like this... Uh, a, a guy who was really fast and everything, and it's just that the costume in the picture is really, I don't like it. <laughs> okay, let's talk about something that came up last weekend, which I recorded. I haven't watched it. It's still recorded here in the DVR. It's the uh, Resurrection. So here's a Resur Resurrection TV review, and I'll, I'll, I'll read a uh, short clip of this one. Okay, so ABC turns deadly serious in a new drama about some big comeback stories with Omar Epps, Landon Jimenez, Kurtwood Smith, and Francis Fisher. ABC's newest 9 p.m. Sunday drama starts off with two problems, neither fatal but both uh, presenting obstacles. First, Resurrection steps outside the template ABC has long set for Sunday night shows, soapy, campy, and playful, no matter how dark the storyline is. And that would be okay, except second, Resurrection starts off deliberate uh, starts off deliberate in and and in some ways cerebral, which which is a tough sell even for PBS on Sunday nights. Resurrection does make one smart move by resurrecting Omar Epps, who brings the same smart sense of the understatement he brought to House. So okay, so let's let's talk about really quick about Resurrection. It's about people. Who it's about these people that all of a sudden are resurrected. Basically, show starts off. 
you, it pans down into this field, and there's this kid laying in a rice paddy. Eight-year-old, I think he's eight years old. He sits up and starts coughing, and then he starts walking, and then they find out some he's in some in China or Thailand or somewhere like that. But they get him from that country back to the states to figure out what happened to him if he was kidnapped, if he you know if something happened to his parents, you know whatever happened, and they can't find anything. So the Omar Epps character goes to pick him up from the airport. Mm -hmm. And while he's picking up from the airport, he's talking to the kid and he gets out of the kid. He says, do you know where you live? And the kid says, yes. So he tells him the town. He said, do you know your address? And he's like, no. And then he said, if I take you to the town, can you show me where you live? And he's like, yes. So they drive to this city in Missouri called Arcadia and the kid shows him where he lives. So they pull up and he leaves the kid in the car. The, the um, agent goes up, the Omar Epps character goes up to talk to the people in the house. And the kid gets out, runs in, and they realize it's their eight-year-old son. Who was eight-year-old, but eight-year-old, but it's been... 32 years 32 since he died. 32 years since he died. So they're both in their 50s, early 60s now. Yeah, well, that'd be horrible. So okay. So that's where it picks up. That's that's the beginning of the show. So that that's actually in the previous also, so you yeah. might have seen it already. Okay, I was saying I would I was thinking this is similar to forty four hundred because if you guys are watching there's a there's a series before it lasted for about three or four seasons only the forty four hundred they were abducted and they came back in the same state as they were mm -hmm. right so this kind of feels the same way yeah but something else is going on here it's, you can't put your finger on it because by the end of the show somebody else comes back. Ah, okay. From the same town. Okay. It's all from the same town? Yeah. And he's been gone 19 years. Wow. Okay, I have to check it out when it comes yeah. out. Okay, so we've been talking about these people disappearing and everything and then coming back. You, we talk, uh, what about have you been flight from Manila? From Malaysia. Malaysia, sorry. From Malaysia. There's this plane, Boeing. Malaysia, Manila, it's all the same. Ah, right. That happened about three or four days ago. Three days ago, I think. When the plane from, coming from Malaysia, it's a Boeing 777. It disappeared in the middle of the waters, I guess, and nobody knows where it is. It just came out of radar scope or something. Just disappeared out of radar. Just dis disappeared. And there is no sign, no contact. Usually before anything happens, the, the pilot, the pilot would say something. So I'm thinking the plane might have blown up, mm -hmm. which would make it instantaneous vaporize and stuff. But it seems like there should be some... Parts of the plane floating around, or some debris, or something somewhere. That's the point. They can't find any debris at all. Where they, the path, I guess, where it should have been. But I heard that they found something in Vietnam, or something, a, a, a some debris. But we don't, they don't know if it's part of the Boeing or that Boeing. So it, they cannot. They kind of ruled out that it's a human error because the person, the pilot, is a uh, is a um, is a thirty year veteran. Yeah. Pilot has been flying so many. Well, they'll just tell us when they find the black box. Yeah, yeah, and we don't even know if the black black, black box would uh, have anything. Uh, I don't know. We're we gonna find out soon, I guess. I sure hope so. So that comes up with a discussion with me and a friend of mine. We were talking about what could have happened. So the probable thing is malfunction, really. Mm -hmm. Maybe uh, they got hit by ele electromagnetic something. And well, there are several things that could happen. The, the plane, the, the plane could have just had a uh, a mechanical failure, mm -hmm. and it, it just went down. Down. Cool. I mean, it, like the engines cut off, the wings broke off, something, and it was gone. Mm -hmm. There could have been a bomb on the plane, which is probably highly more likely these days. Yeah. Um, then you get into the not so normal territory of aliens. Yeah, if we if abducted you're abducted by aliens, it could be abducted by aliens. Yeah, they fell through a, a rip in time, mm -hmm. or the resurrection happened. The rapture. Rapture. What if the rapture happened? Then we're screwed because we're still here. Yeah, we're just recording the show and everything, so yeah, we're kind of so. screwed. It was a rapture. Well, not well, not, not taking light of the situation, but it's just that it, it just makes you think. What happened, right? It just makes you think. I'm sure eventually they'll figure it out. Yeah, eventually. We hope. Because no, 200 people just disappeared. Somebody's going to be raising hell until somebody figures something out. Yeah. 
and for one thing, if it's o oceanic, if you're over the water, there are no cell cell there are no cell phones. Oh, is this an oceanic flight? Yeah, it could oh. be a lost situation. Maybe. It could be a lost situation if it was oceanic flight. Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> Ocea Oceana, Oceanic, Oceanic. I can't remember. Oceanic. That was, that oceanic. Was the, name of the airline was the Oceanic. Oceanic meaning it's just over the water, so okay. there are no cell sites, so you okay. can't even call Verizon or whatever. Okay, so yeah, this is a sad. But part. it seems like you know, since planes have all this satellite tracking and stuff, that. That they would know where it was. That's at. the point. It's 2014. How could you lose a big plane like that? Yeah, there, there's got to be radars or or satellite. We view. forgot one other option. What's the other option? Godzilla. 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 <laughs> Godzilla. Because he's coming back in a couple months. Yeah, that's right. Can't wait. Okay, let's let's move on to events. Actually, this coming weekend. Yes, Maynard's gone yet again. I'll, be, I'll be gone again. I'll be at TBRU in Dallas. It's going to be um, on March 13th, Thursday. And uh, the website is tbru.org. Registration online, I think it's already closed. It's already closed. So you can, but they will take your registration if you're. Oh, they there. will take your money, baby. They will take your money, but not, just not online. Yeah. Okay, so I'm looking forward to it. Um, me, Mike. Uh, Dave and Jason, they're all going to go, and some of uh, some of our New Jersey friends, uh, Benny and Carrie, is going to be there, so I'm excited to see them. Uh, it's going to be a fun weekend. Yeah, are you going to record a podcast while you're there? Uh, we shall see. I just want to relax when I'm there sometime, maybe. We'll see. I'll, I'll have Dave. Uh, You'll have Dave. You'll have or Dave. you can do it with Benny and have an all-Asian show. We can do that. We can do that. Maybe you can get, there's a part of a bunch of other chasers there. You can get a whole bunch of chasers and do a chaser show. Yeah, that's true. Could be a chaser show. I could record oh, a chaser show. Yeah. Oh, I gotta have a vacation myself. <laughs> we shall see if I'm gonna let you go that easy. Oh. Okay, so uh, that's tbru.org. If you guys want to see the schedule, I'm looking forward to go to it. Yeah. It's gonna be fun. Uh, it's gonna be a reunion. It's gonna be a reunion with a lot of friends, yeah. people I haven't seen for a week, or for, uh, once a year, probably. So. Or you can just go and be a lobby whore. Yes. It, the last one was 1600. Just record breaking last year. I don't know if they're gonna break it again. Maybe they'll keep breaking the record. I don't know. But that's just 1,600 registrations. That doesn't include people who are lobby whores, who just went there and didn't register. Yeah. Just Plus people that just come into town that weekend to hang out with friends and stuff and go try to squeeze through the bars. And yep. So could be about 2,000. It's the beer dance. It's got a lot. Okay, I'm looking forward to it. Okay, so, uh, so that's tbre.org. So if you guys have an event or a club or whatever you guys want to do uh, in the future, and you have, uh, we want to talk about it in the show. Maybe we can have you in the show. Email us at events at bearpodcast.com. Oh! <laughs> Anyway, okay, let's go on with the gay, the geek, and the bizarre. Okay, so, uh, okay, this is important to me because I go to Bucky's. Yes. Okay. So Bucky's, our gay today, is Bucky's endorses anti-gay, anti-immigrant, anti-choice candidate Dan Patrick, uh, leading to calls for boycott. Democratic uh, Texas Congressman Joaquin Castro says he'll boycott Bucky's after the popular roadside megastore chain endorsed right-wing Republican Dan Pat Patrick for lieutenant governor. Won't gas, gas up there anymore since they support a fear-mongering immigrant basher. Uh, Castro, this uh, uh, Demo Democrat from San Antonio, wrote on Twitter on Monday. Wonder how Bucky's patrons in, uh, patrons in um, Freeport Lake Jackson stores feel about uh, their endorsement of DP, um, who... Um, who spoke about immigrants bringing diseases, diseases, diseases to Texas. Uh, Patrick was uh, the top vote getter in uh, last, today, uh, last Tuesday's primary. Oh, I forgot to vote. <laughs> uh, okay, did you vote? No. You didn't? And he is uh, uh, favored to defeat incumbent David Durst in a runoff of the GOP nomination. The winner will face Democrat Leticia Van Deput, who is Latina in November. Anyway, so... 
One of the uh, things here is that on the LGBT front, Patrick was, has attacked Houston Mayor Anise Parker for marrying her longtime partner in California. Who uh, He also requested a, an opinion from uh, Attorney General Greg Abbott last year about whether domestic partner benefits are legal. And the day before the primary, Patrick uh, appeared at a Stand for Marriage press conference in Houston, which was billed as a rally against sodomite marriage. So yeah, uh, going back to Bucky's, I don't know, I'm going to go to Bucky's. It's one of my favorite places to stop. Yeah. In fact, there's some Bucky's on the way, right? To Dallas. Yeah, there's one on 290, right? Below Patrick's house. Yeah. There's so what are we going to do now? I guess you're going to have to find some nasty bathroom to go to. Yeah, they have clean Well, bathrooms. I'll stop there and shit. I'm not going to eat or buy anything. Yeah. Oh, you can just take a shit there. Yeah. Okay, that's right. Remember, I'll take a shit at Buck Bucky's. We can do that. I can definitely do that. Well, they do have cleaner bathrooms. So that's one of the it, things. It's really sad. You gotta write all the Asians and stop all the Japanese tourists from coming over here and visit them. They bus them to, to all the Bucky's. There's this whole tour thing where Japanese people come over and do the tour things to Bucky's. Mm-hmm. So you need to put a stop that Asians. <laughs> stop that Asians. Okay, so, um, yeah, that's really sad. Okay, let's go on with the uh, geek, Ray. Yeah, okay, the geek ties into our earlier story about Resurrection, the new TV show. Weirdness. The makers of TV show Resurrection clearly want Nintendo on smartphones. There's a, The series premiere of ABC's Resurrection went out on Sunday, in North America at least, and the show's glaring similarity to the hit French TV series Les Reviants wasn't the only eye-opening thing about it. In one scene, a character is seen playing a game on his Samsung Galaxy Nexus smartphone, which happens to be Nintendo's Donkey Kong, complete with on-screen virtual buttons for movement and jumping. Of course, no version of this game officially exists on mobile, which means the producer of the show either sourced a bootleg version, used emulation, <laughs> or simply mocked up the screen. The latter is the most likely, which begs the question. Does someone at ABC want Nintendo to bow to pressure and bring its catalog of titles to iOS and Android? Okay, I'm looking forward to this if they do have it on, on, uh, on Nintendo. Well, 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 on the show, the, the federal agent hands the eight-year-old kid his phone, and the kid pulls up Donkey Kong and starts playing Donkey Kong. Do you think it's CGI? I'm sure it's CGI. Or maybe it's just a video. It could, it, it's possible it's a video, and he's just playing it, and he's just pretending yeah. that it's a play. So, but... Yeah. Um, I mean, it's very evident that he's playing Donkey Kong. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you, you you got to see it yourself, too? Yes. Yeah, okay. So that's why I put it in here, because I thought it was interesting that maybe Nintendo's getting ready to do something, and they're putting little things out like this, or people are trying to get them poking at them and saying, hey, y'all need to do this, you need to do this, you need to do this. Okay. Well, that's interesting. I, I, like, to, I like to... I like to... I'm going to watch it, so... Does Nintendo still have a game player? Oh, yeah, they do. Yeah. Um, Nintendo Wii U. Oh, it's the Wii. Nintendo is Wii. Okay. Wii U. It. I don't know if they have Donkey Kong there, but they still have the Nintendo DS, and okay. that's still popular. You know. Yeah. Okay. So I'm looking forward to watching Resurrection probably after the show. Anyway, okay. Let's go on with the bizarre. Ray. <laughs> the bizarre is lick this app teaches oral sex via phone licking. Mm. Would you download this? But it's for straight people, I think. I don't know if I want to lick my phone. I know where it's been. Oh, yeah. When it comes to oral sex, maybe it's time to start phoning it in. Lick This, a new app by San Francisco-based Team Club Sexy Time. Uh, <laughs> nice, nice name. Promises to let users hone their cunnilingus skills by licking their smartphones, according to the Fast Company. So it's so you get But first, let me tell you, before you do this to your phone, put a dental dam on it. Yeah, or clean your phone or something. No, don't dam. They don't dam. Okay, the app requires Save no download. Sense. Oh, it's not a don't download. You just go to lickthisapp.com on your mobile browser and start tonguing away at your phone screen. The, uh, the, I wonder if they have ass. Okay, so the uh, site suggests that you wrap it up by putting some plastic wrap over the screen. Oh, okay, there you go. <laughs> See? Dentals down. This, which is a good idea, but yeah. do people use it? Okay, this is, a, this is presumably because your cell phone is dirtier than a toilet seat. Mm -hmm. Once you've fashioned your makeshift dental dam, it's time to get licking. At this time, there are three exercises available for budding cunning linguists. <laughs> cunning linguists. So that's what you call mm -hmm. guys who do that. I guess lesbians can use it too. Mm -hmm. 
up and down, which challenges your users to flick a light switch up and down as quickly as possible. Circles, which as users move the handle of a mechanical pencil sharpener around as quickly as possible. Freestyle, which asks uh, users to use their tongue as an Im implement to jab at a beach ball, <laughs> uh, bouncing <laughs> seemingly. <laughs> you got to see the video, guys. Seemingly at random around the screen. Okay. So Ray is very good at it, I guess. I wouldn't know. You wouldn't know. <laughs> but you know, f for gay guys or... Maybe they'll come up, Maybe we need to come up with Lick That Ass app. Lick, lick, because this list, you know. Lick that ass up. Lick that ass up. That should be the title of the show. No, Maybe we can get, so. get with that artist that went and took all the pictures of people's buttholes. Oh, oh, that's right. Okay, Ray gave me a, show me an article about that, about that. It's a, it's a guy who took pictures with, uh, it, it's a, it was a Magic the Gathering. I play Magic the Gathering, guys. No, 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 no. We did an article months back about the artist that went out and took all these pictures of people's buttholes. Yeah. And then they had a big art showing on it. Oh, really? In the gallery, yes. But the article you sent me... Well, that was something that I was sending you because it had big oh, bears okay. and butt crack. Well, yeah. I, sh I should put the link on the show notes on this one, too. Because actually, it's a Magic the Gathering... It's a Magic the Gathering uh, tournament. And the guys are big guys, and they have their butt cracks hanging out. These are these the nerds yeah. who are playing This Magic one the guy Gathering. attended the event... And he was taking selfies, and in the selfies, he's including all the other guys in the room that had, right. were showing butt crack. Everybody, about six or seven or eight of them. So there's lot, lots of butt cracks. Yeah. And mostly, of course, all of them are guys. And it's just funny. I mean, hey, some of them are hairy. What can I say? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so yes, that's the show. Thank you, everyone, for uh, watching. Listen, if you guys are going to be at TBRU, let me know so we could uh, hang out maybe. We could uh, yeah. uh, say hi, or we could... Um, Grab Maybe he'll podcast why is that then you can be on the show. Yeah, you can be on the show. You can Come on, say hi. Ah, hi. Okay, so uh, yeah, I'm excited to go to TBR this weekend. Hi. <laughs> so thank you everyone for watching or listening. If you want to contact us, send your emails to show at bearpodcast.com. Or you can give us a call and leave us a voice message at 206-222-2327. That's 206-222-BEAR. Give us a call and we'll play the voicemail on the show. Yes. And uh, subscribe by iTunes, Vimeo, or YouTube. And you can uh, listen to the show uh, on uh, Stitcher Radio, on the Roku Player, or in Bear Radio Network. And you can also follow us on Facebook and Twitter. And go to the official website at bearpodcast.com. Thank you, everyone, for watching and listening. And we'll catch you guys on the next episode of Bear Podcast. Many wolves and many hugs. Wolf, what a bear. Podcast your way. Wolf, what a bear. Wolf, what a bear. Shit happens. Audio uh, mishaps. I hope we get. I, I, I Shit hope. happens. See, that's why we need a producer. Coming up next, us redoing the first half of the show because Maynard forgot to cut, set the equipment up correctly. Uh -huh. I don't want to say cutting This is a gay show. You better lick it before mm -hmm. you stick it. <laughs>